This is a small peristaltic pump that I bought off eBay. Now, peristaltic pumps used to be criminally expensive, but they've become um, very affordable now. Uh, so I'll show you how a peristaltic pump works, first of all. A piece of silicon tubing, that's this stuff, quite springy and soft, is passed between a wall and a central roller with um, three separate rollers on it. And this rotates, and when it does so, it pinches the silicon tubing and forces the liquid or whatever is inside it round and pushes it out the other side. Now, there's a few advantages to peristaltic pumps over ordinary pumps. The first one is that the fluid that's being pumped does not get contaminated in any way, like it would with an impeller-driven pump, um, because the fluid never leaves the pipe. It's pumped in situ. The other advantage is that it's very, very accurate. Because it really pinches this tightly, if you turn that a very specific number of turns or distance or run it for a certain length of time, it pumps a very precise amount of liquid. And this is why they're used as dosing pumps in um, various applications like medicine, um, the laundry industry uh, and dishwashing industry, um, and... Uh, fish tank dosing and just loads of applications where you want to precisely measure liquid out. Another place that are actually being used recently is automated bars where they can mix cocktails by pumping different uh, cordials and um, rum and vodka through different uh, pumps. So it's all quite neat. So this one came from eBay. It cost about £10, uh, including shipping, and it's really modular. If I squeeze in these little side um, grips, it slides off this shaft. This is a 12 volt motor. I believe you get 6 volt ones as well, but this one is a 12 volt one. And this whole module comes off the front, so you could mount this on a panel and just clip this completely off the front to replace it or maintain it. And then, this is where it gets a wee bit fumbly for some with my size of hands. If you then um, unclip this, it lets you open it completely to change the pipe or, or maintain or whatever, or clean things out. Occasionally the pipes do need uh, changed. Now what I really think is quite smart about this one, you can see inside, you can see the, the three rollers and the pipe being pressed against the outside wall. What I really like about this one, I'm just going to pull it all out here. You can see that to change the pipe all you need is it's just an ordinary bit of pipe in there. It's got these little clips at the bottom that I think really they're sized to kind of grip it just a little bit and stop it being pushed uh, completely out of the out of the pump as it rotates. So I've not actually tried this pump with liquid yet because I, I don't have any of this pipe but I've ordered some. So what's really interesting about this is I was expecting a, some sort of complex spring-loaded mechanism here but these are just fairly hard little rollers and they're mounted onto this sort of, um, oh, I don't know, alignment plate, spindle plate, but they're not being physically driven around directly um, on the plate. What's actually happening is that when these are in place, the springiness of the, these are fairly loose, the springiness of the outer tube that's being, the liquid's being pumped around, pushes them in the way and the motor is physically just pushed in between them like that. And I'm just trying to get that on. At the moment it's very loose, it's quite easy to get in, but when I put this motor in with the, the pipe in there, it's actually quite hard to push in. You can actually feel the friction of it going in. And it basically means that all the tensioning in there is basically from the silicon tube being wrapped around it and pushing between the wall and against these rollers. So that's a really nice design. And that also provides a sort of gearing reduction because as this rotates, this shaft rotates, it's coupled uh, onto these um, sort of intermediate rollers and then onto the outside tube. So quite a clever little design. The tubing itself, one of the, I was trying to find the actual size required because one of the most common sizes we have over here in the UK for of silicon tubing is 6mm outside diameter, 4mm inside diameter, and that's aquarium airline tubing. This stuff claims to be 4.7mm diameter outside 
and 2.5 inside. Now, I'm guessing the 4.7 is because it's a, a symmetric conversion from 3 sixteenths of an inch. However, I have ordered, I noticed when I put this in, I, I have ordered um, um, standard aquarium size tubing because it was easier to get and I just fancy trying it out to see if it actually fits in this in the first place because I did notice that when you poke this in, and the only way, really easy way to get it in seems to be to actually squish it and poke it down the side of those rollers. Um, I'm looking for something to do that with and I don't see anything. Oh, I, yeah. I'll try not to poke it right through the silicon. Oh, I am going to poke it right through the silicon. Anyway, I've had this apart before and you really just squish this down the side. So I'm going to try it with a thicker silicon because I noticed that there was loads of room in there. Um, even with the silicon squished flat and as long as you've got an inside wall of approximately one millimeter you are going to end up with the sort of total combined wall of about two millimeter thickness when it's pinched flat and that seems to be the optimum size for uh, trapping it against the outer wall in this tube so I reckon the aquarium tubing will probably work so um, yeah this is really quite a neat little thing and uh, as I say at ten pounds for that so that's probably about fifteen dollars um, that's really, really good value. So um, I shall uh, get the, the tubes already ordered. It's in the mail. So um, I'm going to have a wee play with this when I finally get the tube. 